Hey, you're listening to recommendations for my otaku spouse or otaku suzume. I'm Jen. And I'm Wesley. So let's get started. And today we're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Video game. Video games, which I didn't actually recommend to Wes. I just happened to play and he watched me. Video games. So it's, yeah, I guess it's... Kind of a recommendation, but also not. Sometimes with these bigger games, we do a thing where Jen will usually end up playing them, and then I treat it as a long... Let's play. Let's play (laughs) slash film where I have more direct input as to making fun of the Let's Player. Hey. (laughs) Hey. I mean... I don't know if you gave me that much stick while playing through this. No, you were giving yourself plenty of enough that I didn't want to get involved. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> when you get frustrated playing video games, it's safer for me to stay out. Otherwise, you kick me out of the room. Yeah, actually, that's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> actually, wait. Yeah, that is true. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I played Final Fantasy VII Remake and was watched. Now... I guess we should probably start with our history of Final Fantasy and our history of Final Fantasy VII, maybe? Sure, why not? I mean, we've both played the original. Yes. But I I was thinking about this the other day, and my first Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy IX, and then eight because eight was my friend's favorite, and then seven, and then ten, and then ten two, and then it pretty much went downhill from there. But uh, pretty much those five games I played within the span of... Oh, uh, middle school and high school. So within the span of about five years, my entire teenage hood was Final Fantasy. You were a PlayStation baby. Oh yeah, I was a PlayStation baby. So my history with Final Fantasy is completely different because I was not a PlayStation baby. (laughs) (laughs) I played the Super Nintendo ones, including a copy of 5 before 5 was... 5? Out. No, 5 was always 5 because it never came out in the West. When 5 finally came out in the West, they'd already started doing the renumbers. So I played 4 as 2 and 6 as 3 on the Super Nintendo. Oh, God, that's confusing. But 5 never came out until it got the re-release bundled with 6 four. on the PlayStation. In the UK, it got bundled with 4. Yeah, but I'm not from the UK. I know, but... <laughs> so it got bundled with 6, and it was called Final Fantasy Chronicles in the, in the US. Right, yes. No. Yes, and then Final Fantasy Anthology was when they bundled 4 with Chrono Trigger. So wait, was 4 your first one, or was 5 your first one? 4 was my first one. Okay, I thought so. Well, 2 was my first one. Uh, wait, what? Because 4 was called 2 in the US. Oh god, this is so confusing. I'm really glad I started later. So when did, when did you play 9, uh, bleh, not 9, 7? Oh, I played 7 pretty close to when it came out, because it got a PC port. And I picked up the PC port of Final Fantasy 7 from a Costco. Huh. Uh... I don't know, years ago now, and I played it. Yeah, I think probably about 50... Wait, when did this come out originally? Wasn't it like 97, maybe? Yeah, that that could be it. 23 years ago? Okay, so I think I probably played it about 15 years ago then. Okay, I... Yeah, I it came out on PC, and I'm pretty sure I bought it from Costco, and that was a mess of a port. <laughs> but I'll have all sorts of things to say about Square Enix ports on another podcast we recorded at another time. Yes. <laughs> but let's just say that it's interesting when you look at the history now, because you find out that the version of 7 that was ported for PC actually came from an earlier build than the version that went on to be the PlayStation port. So there's differences in the games. And then I think it's the PC port that would then go on to become all the other versions because they lost the source code to the PlayStation one. I could believe that. So when you play anything but the original PlayStation release, you're playing... A remake of the PC version, which was an earlier fork than the PlayStation one. Wow. So you played the dead end version, and I played the one that would go on to inspire millions. No, I played the true version because it was on PlayStation. The PlayStation one's also really weird, where they like released it in Japan and then released an updated version in the West and then released the updated version in Japan again. I don't know. They do that a lot. Square is a messed up country. Square is a messed up country. Square is a messed up company. <laughs> and, Square is a Square is uh, its own country. They they don't know what they're doing. I don't. Well, I mean, they did. I say they game companies back in the old days. In my day, they often released games and then improved them for the West because they had more time to fiddle with them and sort out bugs while they were doing the localization. And then they'd re-release it back in Japan, like Kingdom Hearts. 
series. No, no, we're not even getting into Kingdom Hearts. I know, but that always had the final mix, which was always There's the never fixed a final version. Mix. <laughs> the final mix is just another patch before they come up with the final, final mix. It'll be part of a bundle that comes out on the next gen system when they're ready to release the next game. Exactly. So there's never a final mix. No, but uh, the point I was making is that it bounces backwards and forwards as the West gets a better version and then they go, oh, well, we should really release the, uh, the better version for the audience we actually care about, which is Japan. I guess. I don't know. But anyway. we're talking about my history. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Am I had a Super Nintendo. You, you <laughs> said yours, but I got cut off during mine. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. I'm not sorry at all. No, I'm not. <laughs> but, no, uh, so I had a Super Nintendo. And I, I I got the Super Nintendo late. I think the 64 was already out by the time I got one. So I guess technically the first Final Fantasies I played would have been the Final Fantasy games that were released on the Game Boy, mm. which weren't Final Fantasy games. Right. They were the first Secret of Mana, which re- got recalled, got retitled to Final Fantasy Adventure. And it was the Romancing Saga games, which got renamed to... If, Final Fantasy something, one, two, and three. I can't even remember now, but Ouch. none of them were actually... Everything is Final Fantasy. Yeah, but none, none of those were actually Final Fantasy games, but they would have been my first ones. And then when I picked up a Super Nintendo, I started playing these other Square games. And honestly, Secret of Mana was the best one that they had on Super Nintendo. So there you go. <laughs> okay, so what about Seven? What do you remember from Seven from 20-odd years ago? For me, like 15 years ago. I remember... If you showed me any of the characters, I could name them. Mm-hmm. If you sorry, if you showed me any of the party members, I could name them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as we start getting further away from the party and the main villain, I'm going to just start staring at you blankly because despite having played it 20 some odd years ago, I don't think I've touched it since. No. I had a brief run with one of the spin-offs that came out on PSP, but I didn't finish it. You mean um, Crisis Core? Was that Crisis Core? That was Crisis Core on the PSP. Okay. The yeah. prequel with Zack and Cloud and Sephiroth in their time as soldiers in the army. Maybe. I don't know. I barely played it and then okay. I sat it down. I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Final Fantasy VII was not the groundbreaking game for me that it was for so many. Mm. And so I played it, as I said, 20 some odd years ago. And that was it. I played it because I was playing every Final Fantasy and I played Dirge of Cerberus and Crisis Core, and I watched the movie, and then I got the extended version of the movie. So I was really excited when they were... Actually, okay, so I was excited five years ago, ten years ago, when they said they were going to... When they released That's It, the the Final Fantasy remake was originally released as a teaser trailer for the next generation, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, to be like, actually, mostly PlayStation. To be like, yeah, it it was more like a, hey, look at the cool graphics, and everyone was like, oh my god, make this game and they're like oh people actually want us to remake final fantasy 7 i guess we should do it i think i vaguely remember that trailer because it had like i think cloud was it did they it was the opening scene it was the opening scene with the city and the train yeah Yeah. and he jumps off the train and all that stuff i vaguely remember that but i I honestly i thought it was like a ps3 thing i couldn't i didn't oh actually it might be because it was so long ago but i think when they actually decided to do a proper remake it was a and release a proper trailer for the remake that we played was five years ago okay that's when they started develop well started localization i mean again square is weird square enix is weird it's not square anymore square enix is weird (laughs) and they've shown a lot of trailers that is true who knows if it was for the one that we played that's true I mean, how many did they show for Final Fantasy X 13 2 Lightning's Revenge? No, no, no. Final you're you're mix thinking of. That became 15? No, you're thinking of Final Fantasy 13 Versus, which became 15. Oh, I'm sorry. It's different, Wes. That was from 2008, because I remember getting a magazine that had like a whole half of them. It was, a, it was called Cloud. <clears throat> And it had like this big, shiny um, sort of expose on the movie and Final Fantasy Thirteen and Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus. And it came with a CD that had all these cool trailers for all of these things. And yeah, I like Final Fantasy. <laughs> I can tell. Um, I mean, I don't not like Final Fantasy. I just didn't have the big... You aren't a fangirl. Right? Yeah. I, I When 7 came out on PlayStation, it was a new audience. It was a big new thing. Of course, the PlayStation was big and new. 
It was the first 3D one. Mm. It was, you know, rebooting it essentially in the West, which is why they went back to the original numbers as opposed to continuing to do the screwy thing that they'd been doing on Nintendo. And so I think that kind of being the genesis for a bunch of fans gave it this mythic status and all that. Whereas I don't think I had that. Yeah. Well, I think your first Final Fantasy is going to be the one that you love the most. And for you, that's four. And for me, that's nine. And I really, I remember enjoying seven, but I don't remember anything about the story besides, I, I can remember scenes, but I don't remember what happens in them or how they played out. Or I kind of remember the overarching story and the ending. Yeah. And that's it. You, that sounds about right. So it's I mean, kind of there's hard obviously to like the big famous scenes. Yes. So it's kind of hard to compare the original with the remake when you're trying to work from like 15 year old memory. <laughs> True. There's... And when most of the game isn't in the remake. But I do also think that along with that kind of mythic status I was talking about, Seven became the... So in translation, I've worked on a lot of fantasy titles mm -hmm. and in japanese fantasy titles everything gets referenced back to dragon quest oh yes and i feel in the west when you're looking for stereotypical jrpg final fantasy but i don't even think it's final fantasy i think it's specifically seven mm, like yeah. when yeah, I guess, yeah. amazing world of gumball wanted to do their uh japanese rpg knockoff episode it's just chock full of seven references and some others, but mostly seven. They even do a knockoff of the Knights of the Round Summon in it, which, I mean, that's one of those things that even though I haven't played the game in 20 years, stuck with me. I'm like, yeah, you see it and you go, oh, this is the Knights of the Round Summon. Or, you know, there's other things like Ruby Weapon and all that kind of garbage, but no way. nobody has fun fighting Ruby Weapon. I remember attempting it. I don't remember what happened. I having watched you play video games. I probably games, got angry and gave up, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know how that ended. <laughs> Ouch. I can look back in time and see a young Jen playing the game against Ruby Weapon, and I know exactly what happened. Rude. <laughs> but true. <laughs> but true, but rude. No, Rude's a different character. We're oh talking about God. Ruby Weapon. <laughs> I would... Let's move on, shall we? Fair enough. So, yes. So, the, the, the remake is different. Very much so. Shall we, shall we actually talk about the remake now rather than reminiscing about a game we don't actually remember? I mean, we were just setting the stage, right? Uh-huh, sure. Making, setting the mood. Preparing the atmosphere. You're a very confused atmosphere. Yeah, well. With possible Alzheimer's. Yes. <laughs> There's one thing, so so I, I, as I said, I played Jojo Cerberus, I played Crisis Core, and I watched the movie. And one thing when I watched the movie was I listened to a lot of the music. And the music in the Seven remake was just perfect. I think probably because they had five to ten years to to create all the music there is so much music in this game there is there's what um we looked at the soundtrack and it's seven, seven discs CDs and then a bonus disc that's all the jukebox yes. tunes plus um i was talking to somebody and they were also saying there's like another three or four discs um of like other music from the game and like bonus music and special edition music so but but actually in the game yeah there are about eight cds worth of music so, can I break your heart now? No. No? What are you going to do? What? The music didn't really stand out to me. What? <laughs> That's the only things... What? <laughs> the only things that really stood out to me musically were the jukebox tunes, because it makes a big deal out of it, and it's kind of a quirky little, oh, that's fun, it's a remix of the songs that I know. And then there's one zone in the game where I think they really went above and beyond with the music direction. Yes, yes, that... yes. I know exactly where you where you mean. Yes. Um, no, I don't know exactly because I haven't got the name of the place. The market. The market. The market. I don't remember the name of the place either. <laughs> oh, it's so terrible. We're, we're the worst at this. But that was a scene where they did something really clever with the music and it stood out to me. And then the jukebox songs stand out because it's very much a... It it doesn't appear organically in a scene, really. You have to search it out, and then it sticks out because you've had to do something to trigger it so you notice what's going on. But And they were more of a kind of a smile, right chuckle type thing of, ah, you're doing this song, but in a different musical style and things like that, and I enjoyed it. It's and a bit of fan, fan service. Yeah, and that's the entire 8th CD and all that. But the rest of it, their Final Fantasy music has a style. Mm, that's not trumpets. I didn't say it was trumpets. I'm just thinking of 
Yes. It's not trumpets. Thank goodness. I didn't... What? What? My only critique of the Dragon Quest games is that the music is shite. And the trumpets is a big part of that. So I'm really glad there isn't any trumpets in Final Fantasy VII. I'm oddly confused. I don't know what you have against trumpets, but hopefully none of our listeners are trumpet players. Or Dragon Quest fans. <laughs> like we have listeners. Um, <laughs> Dragon Quest is amazing. But no, the rest of the music was Final Fantasy music. Yes, it was Final Fantasy VII music, but modernized. But you didn't notice. I noticed. I, and I, Some of it, I think, comes back in that when you go back and you play an old game, hmm. all of a sudden it stands out to you how old it was, especially when you haven't played it in a long time. Well, that was also the era of MIDI tracks. True. But, well, one of the reasons why they wanted to go onto like disc and all that for this, the PlayStation games was it gave more freedom to do more with music. Mm. But also, you know, so you kind of get this rose-tinted memories of those old games. Oh, and then yes. when you go back and you play them, so like, the music in my head from the old games isn't the low quality midi tracks yes and so when i hear the updated version it doesn't stand out to me as much as being a look how different this is especially because a lot of the times nowadays like if i go listen to a final fantasy 7 soundtrack i'm probably not listening to the original midi tracks i'm listening to one of the worlds apart albums or something like that they put out which is already a full orchestral remix that is true so when i hear this it doesn't stand out as this big sweeping change it's just like oh yeah this is what i heard when you and i went to the music hall in seattle yeah no that's what i mean that's why i really like the music is it it felt final fantasy and probably yes because a lot of the modern final fantasy we actually listen to is going to be those big orchestral pieces yeah, and I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying that it didn't it did jump stand out. Yeah, it didn't jump out to me and be like, "Oh, it's so amazing" because it was so familiar. I think the thing that I found amazing about it was it triggered the right emotions. And that's what you really want your music to do in a video game is to trigger the right emotions at the right time. And I think a, a, a level of that is nostalgia. And a level of that is for the Final Fantasy fans, if you already know the game, and the story and you know the music when a certain piece of music kicks in you're like oh oh the feels oh this is so good okay two things about that okay number one it better be nostalgic when you're playing a remake of a game <laughs> that as i've said was kind of the genesis of jrpgs for a lot of western fans number two i don't know how you can sit there and gush over the nostalgia of the music when you just finish saying how bad the dragon quest music is when that plays off nostalgia completely yes but uh, but 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 i as we have determined was a final fantasy fangirl that's true you didn't I have the history of dragon didn't quest. have a history of the dragon quest so i didn't get that nostalgia fair enough when i listened to it i just listened to it as a fresh face and was like oh god this tune again didn't you just play this five seconds ago? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's. I think that game also had some other issues with the music where it would restart when you go in different zones, but that's off topic. So actually, so going back to the music in 7, you mentioned already that, that the music in the market stood out to you. Yeah, 100%. And that was my favorite bit in terms of music as well, in that you, you move to different sections of the, the town or the area, and the music shifted into a different style that matched the area but without without step like it's it was still continuing the same piece it didn't stop and then start playing a new piece it was exactly the same piece throughout the entire area but the instruments and the background and like the style the style yeah completely changed yeah it's so clever and because they did it well it was amazing if they had done it where, like, whenever you kind of trip into a new area in the market and then ask to start up the new track or whatever. Yes, that would have been a pain. It would have been horrible. I, I mean, you, you kind of would have had the, oh, this is the same song but done different. Oh, that's interesting. But because you run around that market so much, you would have just wanted to, like, eject the disc and throw it out your window at some point. Yeah. And thankfully, they did it right. <laughs> I've, I've even got the tune in my head now because it stuck out that much. Um, but well, yes. Sounds like it's stuck in at the moment. Y yes stuck in your head yes 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 very funny words thank you <laughs> okay next uh topic wow <laughs> wow so the music was probably jumping ahead a little bit how about the i mean the the beginning of this game 
is the beginning of the original Final Fantasy VII. Uh, this entire game is the beginning of the original Final Fantasy VII. Correct. It, but the point I'm getting to is that this game is has been padded a little. A little? Um, so first, first I want to talk about the stuff that wasn't padded. The stuff that was the same as the original. I'm pretty sure Jesse wasn't padded, but you couldn't tell because it was armored. <laughs> Ouch. Tifa wasn't padded, but it was definitely more bound. She's and wearing a sports bra. It's practical. I'm just saying more bound. I didn't say anything about it. And Aerith has nothing to pad. Ow. Meow. <laughs> I'm calling it like I see him. Okay, so let's talk about the Aerith version of the game. The unpadded version. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually really liked how the story played out. I think, I think the... Basically, the entirety of the remake, which can take anywhere between 35 hours to 120 hours, depending on whether you're a completionist and a slow player, is about five hours in the original game. Maybe, again. Maybe five to ten hours. It's, it's been a while. But we are essentially taking zone one of the original game and deciding to make a full JRPG out of it. Yes. And so it was it definitely... Playing through it, I remembered dredged up from my 15 year old memory um the bits that actually happened in the original like oh i remember this happening oh they're referencing this oh they're doing this and i found that really cool like especially like the the very first mission where cloud is joining the um avalanche for the first time and they're breaking into shinra and then that's pretty much where it starts going off the rails <laughs> yeah i mean we knew that's where it was going to start because that's where the game starts, but it's also what they showed in, as you were saying, that teaser trailer. Mm -hmm. The teaser trailer is, hey, look at Midgar. Hey, who's this weird girl wandering around? This place doesn't look very clean or anything. And, oh, there's a train, cool train, and people jump off the train. Yes. And actually, thinking about it pretty much right at the start, they, they go off. Because that whole mission where you <clears throat> break into the power plant. Mako reactor. The Mako reactor. I'm sorry, Mako reactor. It's a power plant. Mako right. reactor. Fine. Mako reactor. Um, and then there's a bit afterwards where Cloud is like walking through the town and then he gets like a headache flash, like hallucination of Sephiroth. And you're like, who is this? What? What? What is going on? We'll, we'll get back to this, but I just want to say that the whole headache thing, hated it. Really? Hated it. I'm pretty sure he did too, but. Fair enough. No, but he, he gets those headaches in the original. Yeah. And he sees, he, he hallucinates in the original as well, just not as much. Yeah, but... And not like that. I have issues with the game <laughs> entirely based around how it was released by Square, by Square Enix. We're, it's an old game, so I keep wanting to say Squaresoft, even though it's not Squaresoft <laughs> anymore. Like, it I, hasn't been Squaresoft for over a decade. But it Maybe was more. when 7 came out. Yes. Actually, no, it was Square at the time, I think. I think they dropped Squaresoft at the moment, and it was just Square. Anyway, so I keep wanting to say Square or Squaresoft, even though it's Squeenix now. Square Enix. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so Square Enix seems incredibly careful. They're, like, totally willing to say this is Final Fantasy VII Remake. It says that on the front of the box. But they really don't want anyone to think that it's chapter one or part one or episode one or any of those things. And they are like explicitly shutting people down from calling it that. Yeah, I don't know why. I, it's really weird. Like maybe it's because they're aware that there's a chance that they won't be making a second one unless this one had succeeded. I mean, they knew this was going to make bank. Did they? Because They could have literally just taken the story from Seven, slapped it into the 15 engine given it a slapdash a QA and shoved it on the shelf and it would have sold millions. Honestly, I think that's what a lot of people would have preferred. Well, it would have gotten out sooner. <laughs> Ouch. So um, the point I was trying to make before, which kind of ties into this, is that it is padded out. And so, so good points. I personally really liked how all the characters were fleshed out a lot more. And I, I enjoyed seeing their relationship grow and how... They formed these bonds together, not just as the main cast, but also the N the NPCs like Jesse and Biggs and Wedge. For the protagonists, I agree. I really like how they gave Avalanche a lot more to do. I like how they showed it, how Avalanche interacted with the people in their sector. Um, I liked how you saw more of the other sectors. I liked how they showed, you know, just common people reacting to what's going on. Mm. 
when it comes to protagonists in the world, I completely agree. I like the fleshing out. I think it worked really well. When it comes to anything related to the antagonists, I disagree. Yes. Um, I think negative wise, and this is going back to the whole having flashbacks of Sephiroth, having characters that were never in the original, but suddenly they kind of are and they're bad guys, but they don't actually do anything. That was bad. Like, so there's one scene where Cloud is driving down a road on a motorbike with Jess, Jesse. Are we talking about a random soldier that never shows up again? Yes, he shows up and the, he's like, oh, yes, I'm this cool Kingdom Hearts type character. <laughs> Look how sexy I am. And then I'm going to go away because I liked fighting with you and I hope we fight again. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, pretty much. What the did you go? Well, they needed a mid boss, and they didn't want to use any of the characters they really that already established. Didn't and they didn't need want to use a any. Mid boss, though. I mean, someone in the planning decision said we need a mid boss here. <gasps> and then also, like all the head guys in Shinra who are like, "Oh yes, I'm so evil." Mwahaha, well, look except at for my the one, boobs. Except for the one. Except for the one. There was the one Shinra boss who was like every scene. They're like, everyone in Shinra is evil, but not him. He secretly cares. Well, he doesn't really secretly care. He just outright cares and everyone oh, he... just ignores him. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, no, like the way the way they did the antagonist was like not very antagonizing. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Especially even like I was I was hinting at before is that Cloud gets these visions of Sephiroth, you know, and we know who Sephiroth is. We're like, ooh, this is interesting. He's turned up right now. He's not supposed to turn up in this game. But if you've never played this game before... It's really confusing. That's why I hated it. This game was not... Though I keep saying that the original Final Fantasy VII in the West was a Genesis game for a whole new generation. Several generations. Several generations of Western RPG players. Yes. In Japan, FF7 was the seventh in the line. It was it, it, it wasn't was, Dragon Quest. It wasn't Dragon <laughs> Quest. It was another game. In the West, Final Fantasy had had a really spotty situation. You had FF1 on the original NES, FF2, which we got, which was a gimped version anyway on the Super Nintendo, FF3, which a lot of people like, but then 7 was kind of the reboot. The game. The game. It yeah. was big. It's the one that everyone remembers, all those types of things. I mean, even when I played 9 and 8 for the, like as my first two Final Fantasies, I knew about 7. And everyone. I knew I would play it because everyone was like, if you're going to play Final Fantasy 7, you have to play 7. Everyone knew. It's, it's yeah. 7. It's, you know, the Final Fantasy villain in the West is Sephiroth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't... There's references to him any everywhere. I mean... When people talk about ominous Latin chanting for your boss <laughs> theme, they're probably thinking about One Winged Angel and or something that was influenced by One Winged Angel. Mm -hmm. This game will never be that because this game is too stuck on what it was. And I know it's a remake. I 100% understand it's a remake. But whereas something like Resident Evil 2 remade the original game but simply told it in a flashier way this one is so stuck on what it was that it has become impenetrable for a new fan yes anyone who hadn't played resident evil 2 could pick up the remake of resident evil 2 and play it and understand what was going on well kind of i mean the story did fall apart halfway through because yeah but landing. that's not because of you not playing the original that's because of capcom like running out of time at the end or something yeah in seven they took whatever it was a decade to make it but if you don't already know the story and what's going on in seven you're gonna be spending half the game going what's going on and why do i care yes and even when you know the story they change it up so much especially in the last 10 hours like i thought i'd got to the end of the game and it kept going well you still have to do the final gauntlet and then you have to hours. fight the final three bosses which is one boss that constantly changes form oh my god it was so annoying i was like i thought i got to the end of the game because this is the pacing that you had set up and then suddenly that's not what it is and so we're just dragged on and i think that's the problem is that they didn't have any pacing they didn't have any planning they didn't have how they're going to tell the story to a new player yeah and even to an old player 
I was still really confused at the end. To an old player, they essentially go, we're going to shove a bunch of fancy lights at you and Sephiroth because it's Sephiroth and you're going to pay us money. And it worked. Yeah, the it game did. sold a lot. Well, that's because you don't know what's in the game until you actually play it. Well, the trailer showed that Sephiroth was going to be in it. Uh, and a lot of people were like, that's weird. Why is he in it? But they didn't show enough to tell you why, which was enough to draw more people in, being like, I want to figure out why Sephiroth is here in this part of the game when he shouldn't be. So we, we actually have a friend of ours. Oh, sorry. You're going to make a point. Sorry. Well, the point I'm going to make is they knew what they were doing, too, because they put Sephiroth in the trailer. They get people going, I want to buy this to figure out why Sephiroth's in the game. And you know what they do? They never tell you. That's true. Well, that's, Sephiroth that's, doesn't do fuck all in this game, except for walk around looking pretty. I mean, that's all people ever ask for for him. Um, but <laughs> as a raging fangirl. Um, but yes, I 100% agree with that. And I think, as we said, like the, the antagonists were not very antagonistic. Sephiroth doesn't really do anything. The, what are the antagonists going to do? Because they've been immediately overshadowed by Sephiroth. Yes, that too. You can't have Shinra be evil when you've already got something more evil there. Because you're it's essentially like you're looking at him and they're going, ha-ha, but ha-ha. It, but we don't know that he's... If, if we didn't know him already, we didn't. We wouldn't know that he was more evil besides, you know, Spot the Villain. Except for he's the only thing that Cloud seems to care about. And Cloud is the player's avatar in the world. Yeah. So what Cloud cares about, the player's going to care about, and Cloud couldn't give a shit about the Maka reactors or Shinra. That is 100% true. I think that's probably why fans really liked it, was because they were like, oh, Cloud only has eyes for Sephiroth. Ha, 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 ha. I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, we have a friend who... Well, we've got two friends. Um, Do we only have two? Yeah, we've only got two friends. <laughs> um, one is, of, like us, Westerner, massive Final Fantasy fan, and his wife is Japanese, and she's a massive Dragon Quest fan, has never really played Final Fantasy before. She's never played Seven. She doesn't know anything about the story of Seven, including, you know, the major spoiler. Um, so she didn't know any of that when she went into this game. And we asked her afterwards, because she finished it before we finished, um, hey, what did you think? how was the story and she was like yeah it was good but i had no idea what was going on mm -hmm. I'm like, yep we figured you'd probably say that yep so yes they really could have done a much better i think one of the problems is because it spent so long in development you probably constantly had that one guy or like a couple of guys being like ah oh, you know what would be cool fight on motorbikes with this kingdom hearts looking character yeah that's a great idea no you've jumped off the motorbikes by that point no. Oh, shoot, you fight him on the motorbike first. Yep. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh. You know what was really cool in the Final Fantasy VII movie was when Cloud fought those guys on the motorbikes, which honestly was an amazing scene. We should do that again. Actually, they did that again in Reno when um, Cloud fights Reno in the church, and that's very similar to Tifa's Tifa fight fighting. with Rude. Yeah. Oh, I love the movie. So what anyway. we're saying to people really quick is if you haven't played 7 Remake, you probably shouldn't be listening to this because there's probably going to be spoilers. And you probably shouldn't watch Advent Children, the movie, because there's going to be spoilers. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm also going to stick a spoiler warning at the beginning, so I'm pretty sure they already know this. Fair enough. But don't watch Advent Children. What? I mean, what? I mean, I mean, what? I mean, what? What? I mean, rude. Do, do what? No, I'm not rude. We've already been over this. <laughs> do watch Advent Children. But not before you play the game, because large parts of this game were taken from Advent Children, because like, hey, it was cool in the movie, it'll be cool in the game. Slight, okay, this is a slight segue, but I liked how they tied in the movie somewhat with the game. You can tie it in without stealing parts wholesale from it. I liked that, I thought it was cool. We were, you were critiquing the fact that they took the motorcycle chase. Oh no, I was just critiquing that that was like a bunch of guys smoking... And coming up with ideas, being like, oh, this was cool, let's do this. Oh, fair enough. Um, so I think that's where most of the fluff came from, was probably it was in development too long and people had too many ideas and decided to cram it all in rather than actually a director being like, no, this is too much, we need to shave this off a little. True. I also do need to amend one of my earlier statements. <gasps> I like the more detail they gave to the Turks. And they are technically antagonists. Yeah, but they're... I didn't know. Yeah, actually, they were probably the most difficult fights and the most antagonistic. And when they turned up, I was like, oh, crap, we're actually in trouble. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. Yeah, they were the they were the true villains while also not being villains because Advent Children. Yeah, but no, that doesn't happen yet. <laughs> as far as the plot is concerned at this point, 
Yes. They're antagonists. Yes. They're working for the villains. They're kidnapping Aerith. Well, she went along willingly. Bullshit. And they are antagonists. But they also get fleshed out a lot more in the original game. Yes. And I enjoyed everything about them. So I need to amend my earlier statement that I only, that I do like what they did to flesh out some of the antagonists. Except for one thing. What? They completely, like, retconned the one female Turk, which they did in the movie as well. They're like, oh, no, this is too much for Joshi bait. So we need to make sure that they're all guys and they're all hot. Yeah, and the one female Turk, we're going to, like, push to the sidelines and not even give her a character model. Sounds about right. <sighs> they gave everybody a character model. They gave fucking Kingdom Hearts villain who was useless a character model with more plot than her. They could have, she could have been the one on the motorbike fighting him. That would have been really cool. But no. That's true. There is a really cool scene where uh, Rude's got the rocket launcher on the motorbike and Oh my God, yes. So there is kind of the back, you know, they've set the basis to have Turks on motorbikes and they could have put her in there. Turks on motorbikes. I know. It's, it's, (laughs) you didn't, I'm going to make so many. I've already made all the enemies in this. I don't care. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of fans probably agreed. Sephiroth should not have been in this game. Correct. You should have upped. You, if you're going to make these I new think Shinra could, baddies. I think they could have hinted at him. Oh, no. The flashbacks with Sephiroth should have been in the game. Because that would lead up to something later. But they should have. You're going to introduce new Shinra baddies. Let them do something that's not just sitting around a boardroom chuckling. And or playing with your gimp toys. And then, what's her name? Tits McGee is constantly kicking guys around and using them as chairs. Yes. She is 100% yes. just using her underlings as gimps. Yes. And then letting them explode. And, and then explode. And then doesn't do anything. That's the point. None of the Shinra people do anything. No one in Shinra does anything. Mm-hmm. Except for the faceless goons that you kill by the score. Mm-hmm. The only people who have any threat at any point are the Turks, weird brand new soldier guy, and... Cornelio. But you don't, you don't fight, fight him. him. Um, I was going to say, what is it? The uh, the summons that the little kid makes in his computer. Yeah, but that's not really... That's to side quest stuff. Yeah. And you only fight two of them. True. I didn't like that kid either. He felt super Kingdom Hearts I as well. I hated him. He was... He was I don't, horrible. I don't know why he, he was didn't even fit in. There. Yeah, he didn't fit... Same with um, Kylie. She was kind of shoehorned in. Oh, like every single character that was almost every single character that was new was like young and super hot or just like or, massive deviant artistry like yeah. this kid yeah like that kid kylie and the one that works for cornelia with the hat luke mm, i forgot what his name is oh yeah the one yeah. who's like Those, i work for him and i'm evil but i'm just doing this for like the wrong reason so i'm gonna help you but i'm too cool yes yeah that guy yeah that guy i hated him <laughs> exactly. I, no, there were, all three of them were like deviant art, super sexy anime characters. Except for the kid. I'm not gonna say the kid was super sexy. I, I think he was weirdly sexy. No, I, that's fucking weird. Um, no, 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 I didn't find him sexy, but I think that was the thing that I, that was what they were going for. He was a shonen hero, but like a modern shonen hero in a game that's 25 years old. Uh, the problem that I had with it, and the problem that I had with a lot of this, is that it feels like if a the game wasn't so hung up on itself, and b if you're going to make this into a single game, do that. You can always leave hints for more things. Yes. Any fantasy novel that turns into a series will have, like, usually a standalone first novel in case it doesn't sell that well and doesn't get picked up. You leave hints for future novels, but you tell a good contained story. Normally because you actually have a plan for future novels. Hopefully. But at the very least, you need to make sure you tell that good first story. And so there's so many things in here that I look at and I'm like... You could have laid groundwork while still telling a strong story. Like that kid. Kid annoys the hell out of me. Remove him. Put in either a scientist or government flunky. Guy in a suit, black suit, lab coat, I don't care, who's just really, really squirrely. You know, he's not supposed to be there. He's super out of place. That's why you go talk to him. He's not supposed to have this tech with him. He's got these weird VR simulations. He's doing something weird. You don't know what's going on. What do you find out later? He's there on behalf of the mayor of the town. Mm, Because the mayor just shows up later as this whole, I'm running sub-ops. And you're like, you haven't done shit. So lay the groundwork for it. 
make this weird guy who's doing weird shit and kind of helping you, but in a way with tech that you don't understand and just isn't supposed to be there. So the players twig on him. And they're like, well, A, I'm going to get cool summons from him. B, what's going on with him? And then you just tie him into the mayor later. It fits in. It lets you kind of create this whole thing. It makes the mayor more of an actual character than just this one-off joke later. And it fits within the plot of the game that you're telling. Plus, you don't get some weird shonen hero kid who shows up out of nowhere with an ascot. And there's so many things like that. When I was watching you play the game, I'm like, smallest changes. Yeah. And you could have such a stronger game here. The other one that super annoyed me, like even more than the kid, Zach. He doesn't do any. He's not, He's barely in it. That's the problem. Because they try to have this big dramatic moment with him at the end. Oh, yeah. And, and it was just confusing. It was just confusing. You can't have a dramatic moment you can't have an exciting moment without the groundwork being laid yes and they try to have this big dramatic moment between cloud and zach at the end of the game and but but they haven't unless explained you, anything or what that was about exactly it's like, wait what unless you've played seven you don't know what's going on. And so you watch it and you're like, I don't care about any of this mm -hmm. because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The whole game, the whole game, every time someone meets Cloud, he goes, I'm a former soldier or whatever he says in English. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm a former soldier. I'm a former soldier. All in caps, so you know soldier is something. They don't explain once what soldier is. That's true. They don't. They, they never don't. explain what soldier is. They just say, oh, I can tell you're a soldier because you have Mako in your eyes. Yeah. And Cloud is constantly saying, I'm a former soldier. And I think Sephiroth gives him lip about it once when you're stuck in, what's his name's weird, creepy-ass lab. That's towards the end as well. That's towards the very end. But they never explain what it is. It's true. And I think before you get to the big dramatic finale, I think Aerith once mentions the name Zack, but not really. There's like she, some... she does, but it gets blurred out because of his Cloud's headaches. He has a headache right at the time when it comes up, yeah. Yeah, because I guess, yeah. And so it's, again, it's used, instead of giving us these headaches to constantly, like, build up this Fujoshi bait between him and Sephiroth or whatever, Sephiroth is an important part of Cloud being a soldier. Mm -hmm. In the original game, because the game wants to harp so much on the original game without taking any of the good scenes from it, which is weird, there's a whole bit where he's sitting there with Tifa as, uh, when they're kids, and he's talking about he wants to go to be a soldier like Sephiroth. That's in the, that's in the remake. Do they have that when they're sitting yeah. on top of the water tower? Yeah. Okay. Well, then there's they took one of the good scenes. But it just... But they don't explain what a soldier is at that point. They just say, oh, Cloud looks up to this guy. And but, he's a hero. But you could use these like weird flashbacks or whatever to show what being a soldier is. To show mm -hmm. him and his relationship with Zack. To show mm -hmm. all of those issues that would lead up so that when you have that final scene with Zack, it means something to the player. But the only players it means something to now are the people who played Seven. Mm-hmm. Or Crisis Core. Or both. Or, yeah. yeah. But you're not going to play Crisis Core unless you've played 7. And you're definitely not going to play it now because no one buys PSPs anymore. PSPs are dead. Exactly. So, okay. We've ranted about the story for probably a good 20 minutes. Good. Um, <laughs> so, so as I said, I, I liked some of it. I liked how it fleshed out main characters. How it fleshed out everything else was kind of a little too fleshed out and kind of turned into a, a cis pig. Um, and honestly, when I was playing the game, it felt like such a slog. If it was, like I said, the ending just took forever because of pacing, poor pacing. And just parts of the story just seemed to just, I would walk five seconds and then they'd have another cut scene where the characters are talking to each other. And I walk five seconds and the characters start talking to each other. And I'm like, oh my God. And honestly, gameplay wise, and I think I complained multiple times. And you were sitting there, so you probably noticed. Especially when Cloud had to climb a ladder. He'd walk up to the ladder. He'd, like, adjust his feet. And then he'd put his hand up. And he'd put his other hand up. And then he'd go, duk 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 And then he gets to the top, he's like, okay, pull myself up really slowly on top of this container. I'm like, fucking move! Or when, like, the characters are doing, like, the monkey bars. They just move so slowly and awkwardly. I felt like I was playing an original PlayStation game because you can either go forward, left, or right. There's no really any, like, natural movement, and they move so slowly because every single time you want to turn, they have to go, okay, I'm going to put both hands 
in the same place and then I'm gonna turn my body and then move one hand and then I need to move the other hand. I'm like, ah, move! It was so slow at times, like why? And another thing was when I was walking along platforms or areas and the game was like, okay, we're not gonna run anymore. We're just gonna walk slowly. I'm like, why? I wanna run, 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 you stupid thing. Combat looked fun though. Uh... Actually, no, there was one part of combat that really annoyed me, watching. I can only imagine what it was like to play with. But combat at least looked more fluid than that. Combat was a hundred times more fluid than the moving map. And I think another thing that slowed it down before we get to combat was all the mini games that you had to play, like on the motorbike. From the outside perspective, a lot of the quests and side quests and all of that really reminded me in all the wrong ways of MMORPGs. Yes. Where you just want to do the story, but a lot of people keep being like, I'd love to help you with that, but can you go do this first? And you're like, well, I am carrying a sword that's twice your size, and if you give me any lip, I will figure out a way to initiate combat. <laughs> I'm going to initiate this right up your ass. Right? So that... I, I mean, side quests were optional. For the most part, kind they of. they really did just slow everything down a little too much yeah because i like brief jump back to my history with rpgs i played seven because it had the pc port Hmm. i didn't have a playstation Hmm. and by the time i got a playstation 2 i don't the next final fantasy i played really in any decent way was 14 which was the mmo that was on pc (laughs) on pc but the entire first section of the 2.0 section that most people play because 1.0 is dead has that problem where it just gets so bogged down in the weeds at times you are just so frustrated and so you stop caring you're just clicking buttons to get it to move along but you stop for caring about the fact that it's moving along and they did better when you got past that but and at times watching you it felt like seven was doing that yeah you're like you were trying to lead me to this big scene why are you putting all of these pauses in my way like um like the train graveyard why was that section in there it didn't tell me anything apart from Aerith was a lonely child that's the only thing it told me they told you Aerith was was a lonely child like half a dozen times yeah but they that took probably another two hours maybe really wow i don't i think i might have fallen asleep for part of that one yeah because there was also again a lot of really slow movement because every single time you come to one of these little blue interact things on the floor cloud has to go through a really slow animation in order to transition to another section mm-hmm. i honestly think that annoyed me more than the story stuff <laughs> <laughs> but you were the one playing it yeah. i was the one watching it yeah and i fell asleep on you a few times yes so so as you said as you said the the i don't know why the movement and why they had to try and forcibly slow you down at you they probably forcibly slowed you down in order to load the next section of the map but when it came to combat everything was super fluid yeah it was like wah, 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 wah. i was like yeah this is really good fun i love the combat the watching you do the combat made me consider starting my own save file what I'm actually surprised by that. <laughs> because it, I am always very interested in game mechanics. Mm. It's why I read like a bunch of rule books for tabletop games and role-playing games and all those types of things, even if I don't play them, is because it's always interesting to see how a game developer, whether you know tabletop gaming or digital gaming or something, will attach or will attack a certain problem. Pun intended. Yes. But how do you, how do you, you know, why did they do things in certain ways? Mm-hmm. And... I had played recently Dragon Quest XI, hmm. which gives you like free movement during combat, but it doesn't actually affect the combat in any way. Yeah. It's still a turn-based game. It's very much an old-school turn-based game, which, and you can actually push a button to turn off free movement during combat and just play it as a turn-based game if you want. And so that's one way of doing it. That's the old way of doing it. Final Fantasy hasn't done that in a long time. And mm-hmm. so it was interesting in seeing how this went. And I remember watching you in 15, and 15 looked a little a little too less thinky and more just mutton flashy bashing. lights and mutton, yeah. Mutton but, bashing. Mutton bashing. Um, poor goats. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this one seemed to strike a better balance between the button mashing and then still being able to, like, control characters and decide what they're doing. And, and also technical inputs. stuff. 
Yeah. Oh, not ta- tactical stuff. Tactical stuff. Like you had to, if I didn't have the right material equipped, a boss battle would be really hard and I'd probably die. And then I'd be like, okay, I need to equip this material. And so you really had to know what you were getting into. And most of the time I just had a lightning equipped because everything was weak to lightning. But also like in those boss fights, I remember when you were in the sewers, you got into a big fight and it would do certain moves and you have to see what it was doing a move and be like, okay, we're in the sewer. It's doing a move that's going to summon a bunch of water out of pipes. I need to make sure I'm in the part of the yep. zone that's not next to those pipes. Yeah. So it was. It looked very clever and very smart. Yes, a and lot I, of visual cues without the characters going, oh no, something's going to happen. Don't attack when its tail is raised or else you'll proc a counterattack. Yeah, they didn't tell me that. I just got zapped. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they told the English players the wrong way in the original translation. So, But no, so I was... I liked that part of the combat, and that was the thing that I said most was mm. most likely to get me to try to start my own save file, was to try it for myself without stealing your game. Yeah, the combat was clever. The combat was really well done. It was really fluid. It's just a shame that it was hampered by the slow movement. Mm. Uh... <laughs> there were a couple times also where you just got like completely stunlocked and were unable to do anything with any yes, of your characters. Yes, that was annoying. And the NPC, your npc party members you had minor control over it would sometimes just be really yeah. stupid but in the game's defense i did like the fact that when you weren't in control of a character they took less damage yes well actually one i think one of the things was is that when you're not in control of a character the enemy the enemy focuses on the character you're controlling and for the so most for the most part so that was kind of annoying especially if like Aerith, for example has really low defense because she's a magic character and so I'd constantly have to like switch between characters in order to make sure that one character wasn't too low on health and so that the ones that I want to do the thing are doing the thing that I want them to do. Because also you had to build up your um, ATB and the only way you could do that was if you're controlling the character <laughs> because the natural one for the characters you're not controlling always took forever. So I guess that was also an element of tactics in it is that you couldn't just be like, oh, I'm just going to play Cloud the whole time. Because normally Cloud wasn't as effective as other characters on certain situations and you had to constantly switch between them. You mean like when an enemy was out of reach and you're like, ah, Barrett's got a gun. Oh, wait, no, I re-equipped him with the close range weapon. I'm screwed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good times. Thanks, Wes. Anytime. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Combat was fun. I think one thing that I, besides that, actually, it kind of played into the movement or my issues with the movement is the one reason why I... Actually, there are two reasons I absolutely loathe Final Fantasy XIII. And one of them is that Final Fantasy XIII is just a corridor. They managed to make seven not quite a corridor, but it's still a corridor. And that was kind of frustrating. Mm. Yeah, looking at the maps you were going to, there weren't always the most options. No. You pretty much had left or right, and oh no, all the Turks were in the, down the right fork, so you have to go left. And because this is just the first area of the original game... You never actually get to a world map. No. So you never have really any freedom of movement. No. I mean, there's one point where you can move between each section, but it's like, I'm going to move between these different options of corridors. Yeah. I think they did a better job of making it feel less like a corridor, but when you looked at it, you were like, haha, it was a corridor over all along. When you were in the sectors, I feel it was the least corridor ish, but whenever you went off to do something. Yes. It was 100% just a hallway. Yes. I mean, normally it was because I was in buildings, but... No, yes. but like... <laughs> but literally, cor- yeah, literally hor- hallways, corridors. Yeah. My other complaint about Final Fantasy XIII is that the story is crap and it doesn't explain anything or have any plot. So actually kind of similar to our issues with Seven as well. <laughs> I know nothing about Thirteen. I know the name Lightning and that's it. Yeah, that's probably a safe thing. I also know the name Balthier from Twelve and he looks like a badass, but I've heard bad things about Twelve, but Balthier looks fun. Oh, apparently Balthia was supposed to be the main character and they were like, oh no, no one's going to identify with this 30-year-old man. We need to put in a 16-year-old boy who has no personality. Wait, what do you mean Balthia is more, more popular? Well, yeah, because he looks like a badass. He looks like a badass and he hangs out with a badass bunny girl. I mean, hold up. What year did uh It, came, it came out after Taxis Advance. Well, no, I know. It was said in Ivalis. Ivalis? Whatever it's called. But... What, what year did it come out? Um, Should we say about 2010-ish? I want to say 2012, actually. 2012? Maybe. Or maybe so, I'm just thinking 12. If you were six when you played the first game, 
as a rough estimate. Like, Hypothetically. Wait, wait, which first game? Final Fantasy 1. Okay. If you were 6 when you played Final Fantasy 1, you would be then 29 when Final Fantasy 13 came out. Ah. Uh, There's no way you would ever, ever yeah, I see what you're understand a 30-year-old badass running around with a bunny girl. What nope. were they thinking? <laughs> Oh, no, I really don't want to play 12. But Baltier looks cool. I and heard, what's heard... her name? Viera? Viera's the bunny girl? No, that's the race. <sighs> I ruined Fran. That. Fran, Fran. Man. <sighs> I've heard that the translation is really good and that we should play the remaster of 12. But I honestly... Can't be bothered. Well, no, I can. I just had. I just remember I didn't like 12 either because I think I couldn't understand what the English was saying. Oh, fair enough. Because I was young and turns out I'm dyslexic. So big, big, shiny, confusing words were confusing. Fair enough. But we're getting off the subject. We're totally getting off the subject. (laughs) We're like, we're bored of seven. Let's talk about something else. (laughs) (laughs) No, but that's, I think it's clear between the two of us that I took more issue with the game, even though I wasn't the one playing it. Wait, did you just hear the last 10 minutes me ranting about? (laughs) The movement, yes. The movement and the corridoring. Okay, fine. We both took issue with the game. And the story. <laughs> and the story. I, okay, I, we spent the last, like, I don't, we've probably been going on for like an hour now, um, uh, bashing on this game, but, 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 and there's a big but, and I cannot lie. Uh, most of them were pretty flat, unless you're talking about Don Corneo. Ugh, don't ruin this for me, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> what about the lady that gives you a hand job? I liked her. <laughs> anyway, um, but... <laughs> I really enjoyed this game. I there were there were obviously a lot of things about it that I didn't like and ranting about it is fun. But as a game owner itself, I did at the end of the day really enjoy it. And I think that's all thanks to the music. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! It's come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it was easier for you because you could fall asleep while watching me play the boring bits. Yeah, I just would have to wake up again when you were swearing. Yeah like all the time um <laughs> normally when i was climbing a fucking ladder well i also had to jump in to help you with the gym challenges yes thanks for that anytime i was too lazy to do the quick time events so i was like let's do these gym challenges for me because i want the trophies <laughs> i i wouldn't have done it but the trophies were wrestling belts so i had to do it yes they were you got championship belts for winning each one yes and you could equip them for stat bonuses i meant i wanted the playstation trophies oh <laughs> i wanted the championship belt i know you did <laughs> I love you. But what did you think as um, the bystander watching me play? Would you watch me play part two slash not part two because we're not allowed to call it part two? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that that's a whole other issue. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to be kicked out of the living room. But <laughs> <laughs> I think my review comes down to the combat system tempted me to make a save file, but I don't think I ever will. Mm. That's my review of final fantasy 7 remake parentheses part one parentheses we're not allowed to call it that <laughs> the, it is not good enough to stand al- alone so if there's never going to be a part two or a part three i wouldn't recommend people pick this up mm. because it's just going to fall flat and be pointless and so if they want to pretend that this is a standalone game and it has no other parts following it it's a bad game i'm going to say that right now it is a bad game on its own it but, is only the pre- the promise of what the story might bring that would make sitting through 80 hours of this worthwhile. I guess for me, it was objectively not a good game, especially if you've never played it before, but I had a lot of fun. Good. And I really enjoyed, I mean, didn't even talk about how pretty all the characters were, how Cloud looked like an absolute little puppy and how I totally ship Aerith and Tifa. They need to just dump Cloud and run away together because they were so cute. They had the best scenes together. It's true. They did. They had the most chemistry than anyone. Cloud is just like, I'm a little puppy. And Cloud, you're like, yes, you are. Go play with your sword. Cloud spent the whole time having headaches and going, Severoth, but never telling us why we should give a damn about Severoth. So, and I've already ranted about that. <laughs> um, Barrett took on the uh, Major Hughes role where if he wasn't just like, completely suspicious of cloud he was going on about marlene 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 yeah uh so i mean that's his that's that's his thing anyway i know but and also protecting the planet environmentalist Uh, that's true i guess i don't know 
Oh. I liked I liked Barrett. His voice was weird at first, but I got used to it. Yeah. That's my one last thing I didn't like about the game. <laughs> what? It involved, the characters? It involves Barrett. <laughs> Why? Because yeah. he was the he was the butt of all the jokes. No, I'm fine with that. Uh, it goes back to the whole they made this game for fans of the original. Yeah. And no one else. Mm. And there's a scene. I don't want to give like I, we've given away tons of spoilers, I guess, but we haven't really given concrete spoilers. And That's so there's true. a scene in Shinra's office towards the end. Oh yeah, that was kind of BS. It was just it was so. St- stupid because it doesn't mean anything unless you've played the original game and if you've played the original game it lessens the impact of it by having it happen before it should have happened to a character that is the joke character yeah it's so it's 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 like what yeah the ending it's like adding a laugh track to a serious moment (laughs) what's the point funnily enough so when i i looked up final fantasy 7 on youtube because i wanted a quick summary of the story again to remind me the remake that is and the top 10 videos were all Final Fantasy VII ending explained, which goes to show you that the ending confused a lot of people, which goes back to the whole issue of they didn't make this... For for new people to the series, and even people who know the game were just confused by it because there are so many, oh, let's explain the ending because it was really confusing and not very well done. <laughs> and that was an element of it. Putting out random mystery boxes with no build-up and no payoff is not good storytelling. Yes. It happens in modern movies, it happens in modern video games, it is garbage, it is a crutch for bad storytellers, and it needs to stop. Ah! <laughs> but I really enjoyed this game. Good, good. No, and I'm, I'm glad. I hope that, I enjoy ranting about it with I, you as well. <laughs> I, hope that everyone, I hope that everyone who plays any game enjoys it. That's the point of a video game, is you sit down and you have fun playing it. Unless I have Stockholm Syndrome, and I've invested so much of my life in this, that if I admit that it wasn't fun, I would cry. No, don't do that. <laughs> I, I don't have time to deal with your therapy. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I'm in the middle of Outer Worlds right now. I've got my own video games to play, and it's not happening. <laughs> wow. Supportive spouse here, asshole. Hey, I sat next to you while you played this game. You fell, on, you fell asleep on me while I played this game. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, do do we think that wraps it up? I think, I think that wraps it up. We, we could talk about this game for so much longer. We haven't even talked about the translation. We haven't even talked about like a, a lot of a lot of elements to this game because there's just so much to talk about. But yes, we probably should wrap it up. They fixed the translation. Yay! Yay! They made it amazing. Yeah, the translation was really good. We played Japanese audio and English subtitles Correct. the whole way through. So assuming that they say in English what they wrote in English, they did a pretty good job. Except they didn't add subtitles for NPC tracks. Yes, there's a lot of little background mumbling that don't get subtitles. Which is bad accessibility. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to put subtitles, just put them in. (laughs) Don't pick and choose. Okay, so now we can stop talking. Now we can stop talking. (laughs) Well, thanks for listening to us ramble and rant and complain and scream and gripe and pull out our hair, but also admit that maybe this actually wasn't that bad at the end of the day. You said it, not me. For, I don't know how long we've been talking now, probably about an hour. I forgot to change the time track to seconds from bars. So we've been doing this for 2,100 bars at 120 beats per minute. Okay, okay, you don't need to do the maths. Let's just wrap it up. Thanks okay, for listening. <laughs> this was another episode of Otafususume, or Recommendations for My Otaku Spouse. I was Jen. I was Wesley. And you can find us online at www.annabrosecreative.com. Or on Twitter at Annie Bros Creative. If you disagree with us, or you agree with us, or you want to have your own say, go ahead and send us a tweet or say something on our website. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll probably I will. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.